Very pleased to welcome Ed Bastian to the Wings Club uh, Aviation Leader Series luncheon today. Ed serves as the president of Delta Airlines and is a member of the company's board of directors. For those of you who have not been paying attention, Delta Airlines is 85 years old uh, this year. Um, they are also, they have the largest capitalization of any airline in the world. In fact, they were the first ever to achieve $35 billion of market capitalization. If you want to check your numbers, that's pretty stunning. With an industry-leading global network, Delta and Delta Connection serve about 165 million customers each year, fly to 322 destinations in 59 countries across six continents. This is a global business they are running. They also happen to be, since we're here in New York City, uh, the biggest airline in New York City, expressed in terms of weekly seat departures. This year, Delta was named the 2014 Airline of the Year by Air Transport World magazine, the first time in a decade that a North American-based carrier had earned that distinction. Ed oversees all commercial and financial activities for Delta. He's also responsible for expanding relationships with Delta's global partners through the SkyTeam Alliance. And during his time with Delta, Ed has had many important assignments, including playing a pivotal role in the acquisition and merger of Northwest Airlines. Ed and his team have led the industry in developing some strategies that are kind of different to try and make the business less vulnerable to economic cycles, including the well-known purchase of the Trainer oil refinery, reduction of the company's debt, and here's something that's really revolutionary, returning money to the shareholders. Thank you, Ed. In addition to his position at Delta, Ed serves on the board of directors of Aeromexico, Goal in Brazil, and Virgin Atlantic Airways in the UK. He's also a member of the board of directors of the Woodruff Arts Center in Atlanta. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ed Bastian. get tired hearing that, Barry. So we figured we had to spend and give the money back to the shareholders else we'd buy more Airbus aircraft. So we uh, appreciate your contribution and your understanding as part of that. Well, it's great to be here today. Thank you for uh, inviting me, uh, Barry. It's very kind of you. Uh, it's a great honor to be here with the, uh, the Wings Club. And we've got a wonderful group here. And glad we sold out the place. So we were a little worried about that. So we've got a number of Delta colleagues we've also brought along just in case. Uh, but we do have some great uh, Delta leaders in the room today. I do want to acknowledge Ms. Gail Grimmett. Gail, where are you? There she is, who leads, who leads New York. We have our, uh, our leader from LaGuardia, Ms. Ginny Elliott. And uh, thanks for being here, Ginny. We've got Henry Kuykendall. Henry runs our operations in JFK. Henry, where are you? OK, you're back there. Yeah. Okay. Along with Cyril Turner and James Sarvis, who run uh, DGS and uh, many of our airport locations around the world. And we also have uh, Ch Chuck Imhoff. Chuck runs our sales organization here in, in New York and keeps all of our customers happy. And uh, many, many others, uh, members of the team that are here today to, uh, to participate in the event. So we're pleased you all made it. We also want to welcome and thank many of our business partners that, uh, that are attending the luncheon today. We realize we can't run this airline with the, the sheer size and scale and complexity without an awful lot of skills and an awful lot of talent and a lot of dedication to Delta. And we thank you for what you do for Delta. You're as much a part of the family as any of us, and I, I really do uh, want to pay tribute to all the work that our many, many business partners in the room do to help us uh, on our mission. Also want to recognize we have Captain Lee Moak in the room somewhere today. Ka Lee, where are you? And our <laughs> We've been on this uh, journey. We, uh, we were talking yesterday. We've been on this journey about 10 years. Uh, Delta Lee and I, and uh, talking about what, uh, what Delta could turn into. And uh, please, he's got a group of our, our pilots, our finest with him today. So thanks for being here as well today. It's always good to see you guys. But as this group well knows, uh, you know, change uh, doesn't normally mix well with the aviation industry, certainly not historically. And when you think about the amount of change that this industry has been through over the last 10 years, it really is remarkable because for the first time in this industry's history, certainly in the U.S. industry's history, that change actually has been for the good. It, it's been for the positive. And we're proud that the amount of change that is being driven through the industry 
is being led also by the U.S. industry. And in fact, one could call this time, the, uh, this is the renaissance period of the U.S. aviation industry with the impact that we're having on a global scale. As Barry uh, mentioned in his kind introductory remarks, it was capped for us this past year by Air Transport World naming us Airline of the Year on a global scale. You know, compared with all the product and all the, all the great carriers that we compete internationally with, the first time in over 10 years in the U.S. market, the U.S. carrier won that distinction. So we're very, very pleased that we could, we could uh, uh, claim that honor and proud of the amount of impact Delta's having in leading the industry forward. What have we done that's different? I mean, there's an awful lot of things that we've, we've done differently, but you know, fundamentally we've challenged ourselves to do things differently. We, we rejected the notion 10 years ago when we, we bottomed out, we were embarking on our restructuring strategy that business had to be done the way it always, always was done in this industry. And we had to find a way to take better control of our own destiny. You know, there's, there's a view historically in the aviation industry and in the airline industry that there's too many factors outside of your control to ever have a solid, investable uh, business model and business plan with real returns for all stakeholders. Uh, many times in, the, in the, uh, the history of the aviation industry, there were returns for certain groups of stakeholders. Maybe the employees got an outside share of the, of the prize, or maybe the shareholders at certain points, or, or certainly the, uh, the OEMs and, and all the suppliers to the industry uh, have made out well on the backs of the industry. But for the first time ever, we're finally seeing a carrier, and that's Delta, our carrier, step out and say that we're going to take control and we're going to make decisions. We're going to be bold and courageous and willing to go where no one's gone before. And I think it's really at the core of some of the change that you're seeing that we've, uh, we've been implementing. And uh, you know, when we talked about that, and we, we, we set on this path about 10 years ago, while we, uh, we knew it would be a daunting task, we also knew that we had the strength of 80,000 of Delta's finest that was behind us. And, and having the strength of the people and the service and the level of spirit at Delta, that we could do the remarkable. And I'm very proud of the people at Delta in terms of, because that's exactly what we are doing. We are doing remarkable work. And you know, when you, uh, when you think about it, uh, talking about our, our impact here in New York, you, you, it gives you a good reflection of the changes that we've, we've implemented. And I'd like to take you through some of what we've accomplished here in New York. First of all, you need to know that this is a market that is dear to my own heart. This is, this is home for me. This is where I grew up. This is where I've lived most of my life in, uh, in New York. So I understand how important it is to win in New York. But more importantly, as a company, we also know how important it is because it's not just about Delta. It's just not about the aviation industry. It's about you know, being a player on a global scale and in a global stage that impacts businesses the world over. And our renewed investment efforts here began, I'd say, seven or eight years ago when we, when we, uh, we tapped Gail to come up to uh, New York. Most people think Gail is from New York. She's actually from Chicago. <laughs> but, uh, but we've done such a good job that, uh, that people believe she's a New Yorker. So it's, it's great, to, great to have her there. But, you know, we staked out a bold claim that this was our market that we were going to win in. And when you think about where we were eight years ago, it was really an outrageous claim. To, 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 make that, uh, to make that statement. When you think about that, eight years ago, we were a distant number three in this, uh, in this market and losing hundreds of millions of dollars a year uh, in this market with some of the oldest uh, facilities uh, known to the airline industry. And I, that I'm being kind to our, our good friends at the port. It was, a, it was a miserable experience that we had in some of our, our facilities, which we've since got a lot of support in repairing over the time. We also didn't have access to Heathrow. We were not allowed to fly to Heathrow. We only gained access to Heathrow in 2008. We were restricted by the bilateral. Uh, we didn't have any service to South America, and we didn't have any service to Asia. But we were still going to win in the marketplace, and we were confident we were going to win, and we knew that we had to go fill all those holes, and we have filled those holes. And you know, Delta at the time was known as the airline that you would take to Disney World if you were flying out of New York, and today it's known as the airline that you want to go on corporate business. So with the help and support of many gathered here today, uh, and certainly spearheaded by Gail and her team, we are now uh, New York City's largest and fastest growing carrier. I'm very, very proud of it. No other airline can take you to over 500, uh, with, with, excuse me, 500 flights to 128 destinations on a daily basis. And that's our combined look at what we've got at JFK and LaGuardia. Uh, we've seen steady growth in passenger count. 
Uh, in 2011, we had 20.8 million passengers that we served a year. In 2013, we've increased that number to almost 24 million. So you think about the impact of that extra 3 million passengers. In 2014, we're growing as well. We've added a lot of strength with our partners. I see our partners from Air France, KLM here today. Thank you for, for joining us and, 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 and strengthening that partnership that we have across the transatlantic to Paris and to Amsterdam and with Alitalia to Rome. And we've also created in, the, in the, uh, the last couple of years a new partnership with Virgin Atlantic where we've got an ownership stake and we've got a joint venture where the, uh, the uh, JV has created a daily schedule of nine trips on a daily basis between New York and uh, London, a market that we were absent from just five years ago. It's really, uh, really remarkable. But the growth of our network was just the beginning stages of the improvements we've been making. We've also invested over $2 billion here in New York in improving the customer experience with our new Terminal 4 facility at uh, JFK. Sue Bear is here, as, long as, as well as our, our friends from the port, all who have been very instrumental in helping us bring, bring that uh, facility to life, something that we talked about for 10 years, it seemed, and, and uh, it's finally here, and, and it's doing great. <clears throat> and we've also doubled our share at LaGuardia, where we've, we've, as you know, have acquired the old U.S. Air Facility at Concourse C, and we've combined that with Concourse D, and we now have a 50% share at LaGuardia, and we've made massive improvements in the facilities, and, and the, uh, the OTG has done a really nice job with the, uh, the amenities in that airport, as well as building a connector, all in our efforts to ensure that our airports in New York are worthy of the stature that New York holds in the global economy. We fully install flat beds across our entire international product. Uh, we now have for the summer, for the first time, flat beds on every single international flight that you take on Delta in, in, in the business cabin with direct aisle access. And we were talking at our table just how important that direct aisle access feature is. And if you haven't, haven't ex, uh, experimented and used that, uh, use our product, I'd really encourage you to. It's second to none in the, uh, in the business cabin. And we've also improved our passenger amenities aboard our international flights with Weston's Heavenly Bedding as well as menus from uh, Danny Meyer's famous Blue Smoke restaurant, also available on our international flights out of, uh, out of New York. And so hopefully while you've experienced those uh, uh, improvements firsthand, you also need to know that we're not done yet. Uh, we're in the phase two process at JFK where we're building an additional 75,000 square foot expansion with 11 more gates added onto the end of the T4 uh, Concourse B facility that's going to be primarily utilized for ease of connecting, uh, connecting flights through, uh, through JFK, and that'll be open by the early part of 2015, and it's going to be another big enhancement to our product out at uh, JFK. We're also continuing to work at LaGuardia. As we as took over the uh, Concourse C facility a couple of years ago, it hadn't been invested in many, many years, and we were going through a, a major overhaul of C. And if you've been there recently, you can see, the, uh, you can see firsthand the changes that we are making, as well as improving the, uh, the security access flows, because we, we know there are some very big bottlenecks on the security checkpoint lanes at LaGuardia, and we've made some major investments, and we'll continue to make investments to ease our passengers' comfort there. And then finally, we also have launched, uh, as of, uh, or launching as of July 1, our new Business Elite product, where we'll have our full flat international business product on our Transcon markets in, in JFK LA. Uh, all JFK LA flights starting uh, July 1 will have that product, and we'll also have it on San Francisco and Seattle uh, starting early part of next year. <coughs> Excuse me, I could go on and on, but you get the point. Uh, we've made a lot of change in who we were over the last 10 years, but we could not do it without the support of the 9,000 employees at the 11 New York airports that we operate out of here, as well as the great business partners that we have that are, have been by my side. First, I want to pay special thanks to uh, Pat Foy. I you know Pat's not with us today. Uh, the executive director of the port, he's been a great friend of ours in terms of helping us through the improvements. But I, I believe Tom Bosco, Tom, are you here? Where, is Tom here today? Somewhere? Yeah, there he is in the back. Tom, thank you for what you do for us, you know, leading the aviation department. And you're a great friend and a great business partner. We really appreciate the support of you as well as all of your teams out at, uh, out at JFK and LaGuardia particularly. We would also like to uh, thank Gary LaBarbera, who's here. As the, uh, he leads the New York Building and Trade Council for the great work you guys have done. You've delivered those projects on time and on spec and on schedule. And we have confidence in you. And we're going to keep building and keep, uh, keep doing more. And it's, it's more jobs for, uh, for everyone here in, uh, in New York. Also want to thank our corporate customers. Uh, you guys have lived 
through a lot of growing pains uh, with us over the years, and uh, you trusted us with your, with your customers, and you trust us on a daily basis, and we're going to continue to earn that trust. I want to thank you all for, for placing your trust in, uh, in Delta, allowing us to take the best possible care of your travelers. We're also proud that we've got many partnerships that we've created over the last five years in the city. Uh, we're the official airline of the New York Yankees. Michael, I see you over there. Thank you for being here. Uh, the New York Mets, uh, the New York Knicks, the New York Rangers, uh, the Liberty. I don't know if there's any other New York teams you've got. I guess the Giants. But, uh, <laughs> United, watch out. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres and the University of Syracuse Athletics. Uh, and you see Delta across the city from Madison Square Garden to Radio City from the Whitney to the National September 11th Memorial uh, to the Queens Museum. And our employees that we're very, very proud of the work they're doing in the community in giving service. There's tens of thousands of hours that they commit every single year to the, uh, to the community. We actively support many local organizations, including the Food Bank for New York Marine, uh, Toys for Tots, the YMCA in Buffalo, Greater New York, uh, Syracuse, as well as Rochester, and many, many more. And all that work is going into creating a winning product and a winning service by a winning team, creating new jobs in the local marketplace, and a lot of economic growth for New York, which really needs it. And turning those large financial losses that we had back you know, seven or eight years ago into a profit this year for the first time in our history. So I could not be any more proud of my team, and thank you for all that you guys are doing on behalf of New York and on behalf of Delta. I just get to stand up here and, and brag on you, and that's, that's the funnest part of my job. But the story of that New York turnaround in a microcosm is a bit of the story of the turnaround of Delta in, in, in a large, uh, larger sense. Uh, 2013 was, by all measures, the largest and most successful year in our history, and it wasn't just on the financial results. Uh, we did post the largest uh, profit of any airline on, in the global scale, not just in 2013, but ever recorded in the, uh, in the aviation history. But we've also had run the best operation of any, uh, of any airline out there on, on, a, uh, on a, a, candidly, an historic scale, as well as some of the best customer satisfaction scores that we've certainly ever seen in our, in our history. And they do all go together, tying to whether it's st stock buybacks or increases in the, uh, in the share price. It's a, uh, all stakeholders are benefiting. From the, uh, from the success that we're having. Uh, there's many reasons why, on the broader scale of the opportunities, why Delta, and why have we been as, as successful as we have, humbly as successful as we have, but at the core, it's uh, that willingness to take the bold steps, the unconventional steps, you know, going in a different path than anyone else has gone through that's really providing us a lot of, a lot of confidence and a lot of courage facing this, uh, this difficult industry. It's everything from investing in some very important business markets, investing in London, uh, investing in Aeromexico, and we're, 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 uh, we've got a 9% stake in Aeromexico, investing in Goal. I see Edmar, who's the CFO of Goal here today. Thank you, Edmar, uh, for being here. Uh, you know, when you think about travel to the uh, some of the most important international markets that US travelers you know, need to get to, Brazil and Mexico and the UK, we're now invested with deep partnerships with the best carriers in, in, in those markets. You know, and uh, we really are proud of the opportunity that we've had there. It goes into investing in the oil refinery and, and buying, the, uh, buying the facility at Trainer and trying to uh, take control of our own destiny and not sitting back and being a victim of what's going on in the oil markets. And it's going even to the willingness to use uh, pre-owned aircraft and unconventional strategies in buying so we don't have to buy all the, that's the, the Airbus and Boeing brand new models, but we have a nice blend of a uh, capital-friendly uh, acquisition strategy going after whether it's the 717s or the new 321s that we announced last week. All that considerable capital savings. But behind all of that, the most important factor, as I said earlier, it really is the service and the commitment to excellence by our employees and all the support we receive from our business partners. We've made the major improvements. We've made all the improvements that we need to make to win successfully in the hard goods area, in the, in the service arena. But what, what is that truly separates Delta apart in the service level? It is the people. It's the only thing in an airline that can't be replicated. And we truly believe we have the best. Uh, I'm sure everyone will tell you that, but I know we have the best people. And, and the results are evident. All you have to do is look at the operational performance that we've been posting over the last several years. It's at an unprecedented level, and there's nothing more important to a customer than delivering the product and the service on time, on schedule, 
with a bag promptly delivered in a, uh, in a, in a, a, a manner that people come to expect and in raising the bar around expectations. You know, in 2012 and 2013, our employees turned in a 99.5% completion factor rate on the main line with an uh, on-time arrival rate within 14 of 85%. No airline has ever, on our scale, achieved that level of reliability over such a, a long duration, and we're posting those numbers again in 2014 as well. We operate 2,000 mainline flights a day, which covers over 80% of the total seat departures. Uh, and today, 100% completion factor days are on goal. 100%. That's the yardstick that we're using to measure ourselves with. In 2011, we had eight of those, eight perfect completion factor days. In 2012, we had 28 perfect completion factor days. In 2013, we had 72 perfect completion factor days. And this year, we're running ahead of the pace that we had in 2013, despite the fact we had the very difficult weather conditions that we experienced in the early part of this year. And we're also incorporating that same level of operation rigor to our Delta Connection operations. It's often said in the airline business that the main lines where all the focus is, but the regional carriers are the, you know, those, those, those passengers, they pay the same and they, they buy a Delta ticket, they have to have the same quality of experience. And we've not, as an industry, invested the way we need to in our regional operations. Well, I'm proud to say that we are, and, and James and, and uh, Cyril and the team back there that, uh, that's running a lot of those uh, coordination with our, our connection partners are instilling the same level of rigor and the same level of operational prowess into the connection uh, business that we have on the main line. And you can, while there's more work to, to uh, needed to be done, you can expect to see significant improvement along the way. And with this level of commitment of excellence from our employees, you know, the customer satisfaction scores continue to rise to new highs. The profits raise, are raised to a, an historic level of profitability. And our shareholders are happy with, with, the, with, the, uh, with the returns we're seeing. But despite all of that, the most gratifying rewards that I see in my job, and I think many I can speak on behalf of my colleagues at the management at Delta, is what it does in terms of changing our employees' outlook and the motivation and the incentives and the rewards when they know that 15% of what we make goes to them. Uh, back in 2005, one, I think one of the smartest things that we did, we didn't have a whole lot of money uh, in all candor, but what we did say is that when we started to produce profits, our employees would get paid first. And 15% from dollar one of the profits of the corporation go to our employees. The management team doesn't participate in that. In fact, any bonuses that we get paid get added back into the pool, but they, you know, they don't even get deducted from that, uh, that level. And on this pa we paid on Valentine's Day. This past Valentine's Day, we paid over $500 million of profit sharing to our frontline employees. And you talk about a happy day to be flying on Delta. Uh, Valentine's Day is the day to fly if you want to, you want to be, be flying with us. And you know what? This coming year, it's going to be even better uh, with, with the path that we're on. Uh, those, are, those are really happy checks to write. So, so with that, I'm going to conclude my remarks. Again, I want to also thank all of our business partners. I'd be remiss if I didn't pay special uh, thanks and attention to all of you because we realize we can't, we can't do this uh, without you. Uh, you're critical to, to our operations. You're, you're great partners. I know many of you are represented in the room today. Thank you for coming out. But, you know, we look at Delta as a family. We really do. And all of you are a big part of that uh, family. So th thank you, Barry, for having me here today, for inviting us, giving me a chance to brag on our team and brag on, on the Delta people. And uh, we look forward to many other opportunities to, uh, to uh, report on the successes of the team. But more importantly, we want to have those successes in the cabin, not necessarily from the podium. So thank you. Ed has volunteered and we have time for a few questions. If there's any uh, questions in the room, uh, Marie has a microphone here to help us. If you do have a question, uh, please give us your name and affiliation first. Go ahead. Um, Edward Russell, Flake Global. Um, Ed, I would wonder if you could just talk about how important it is for Delta to be making investment in uh, product experience for customers, customer experience today, uh, and how that translates to your bottom line. Well, the, uh, there's, there's no question, particularly on the international side of the business, 
that the investments in the product uh, have risen to new highs across the entire industry. And, and these are no longer optional investments that we've got to make. We have to have flatbeds. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a, uh, a part of the cost of doing business because the, uh, the, uh, the consequence of not having it is you're going to lose uh, largely, particularly in the corporate arena. Uh, so our investment strategy has been driven about improving the product quality for all of our customers that we see across the, uh, the, the airline. But most specifically, it's been on the, uh, on the international side of the business. And we have seen some pretty significant returns from that, both on the revenue front as well as on the, uh, on, on the opportunities that we've had uh, for partnerships. Uh, I think with you know, the air transport world acknowledgement that we received, I think, was another, another step in that direction, that, that we have a product that's, that you know, we, we can compete with anyone in the international marketplace. And so it's, it's really, really important. Hi, Al Scott from Reuters. Um, I'm just curious um, about your thoughts on the A380 plane, and we've talked about how it doesn't necessarily fit your routes, but your partner, Virgin, has six of them on order. Any thoughts on how those will be used or disposed of or what you'll do there? I think you have to ask the guy from Airbus here what he, what he thinks. Uh, I, think, uh, I think Virgin's been public that they are continuing to evaluate whether the 380 is the right airplane for them, and I don't think that it, they've made a firm decision for the future around the 380. I think it's still an option, but you know, I don't want to speak for them. You really need to check with the guys at Virgin Atlantic on that. Well, that's good. Thank you. We uh, answered all the questions. I want to thank you again, Barry, for the opportunity to come and brag on uh, the folks from Delta. But thank you.